Welcome to The Art of Medicine, the program that explores the arts, business, and clinical aspects of the practice of medicine. I'm Dr. Andrew Wilner, and my guest today is Dr. Colin Zhu. Welcome, Colin. <laughs> hey, Andrew, how's it going? <laughs> nice to see you again. Colin, I think we first connected when I was writing my book a few years ago on locum tenens, because I, well, there were, you are one of the locum tenens physicians, I think, who fits into the just graduated doing locums to figure out what I want to do with my life classification, yeah. right? As opposed to sort of mid-career or pre-retirement. So mm -hmm. let's start with that. Tell me how, how did you decide, hey, I'm going to do locums and go from there? Yeah, yeah, definitely. Well, um, I'm Colin Zhu. Uh, thank you so much for having me on your show. Um, Andrew, it's a pleasure and pleasure to, you know, meet with you again and work with you. Um, so, you know, the, the chapter in the book, um, or albeit like a couple of pages, it's really a nice short nutshell of uh, the reason why I go, got into locums. And I don't know if your audience is all physicians, but, you know, locum tenens to me, the, how I describe it to people is kind of like a traveling doctor or like a substitute teacher for doctors. And, um, you know, when I was in school, when I was in training, um, I, uh, you know, I wasn't really super attracted to, you know, one or two pathways, whether it was working for a big, healthcare system or joining a big group practice where, so to speak, you kind of go, you know, from the bottom to the top again. And so very, very corporate-like is, you know, where our healthcare system, you know, is at, um, you know, there's a lot of business aspects that come with it. And so I wanted to dwell more into, you know, what, what kind of doctor I still needed to be, not in terms of a specialist, but in terms of you know, the caricature, the personality, the avatar, you know, at the end of the day, you know, this version of myself that I was going to put out into the world. And so I needed to be able to explore that a little bit. And uh, locums is kind of like, you know, kind of like dating jobs, so to speak. And so, you know, over the span of four years, um, I practice in four different states in multiple, you know, uh, different type of outpatient med uh, family medicine type of practice settings. And uh, pretty much um, over the span of four years, uh, maybe seven to eight different types of assignments, um, give or take three to six months um, at every, uh, every uh, given spot. And so it really exposed me to different, uh, uh, you know, groups of people, practice settings, um, and I mostly practice outpatient uh, uh, family medicine. So what did you learn about yourself after all that experimentation? <laughs> for, uh, it's a very good question. Identity. Uh, I noticed that I don't really, uh, what, what I, what I uh, you know, for my work, I was able to just dive into patient care. And that was really, really nice. You know, you and I, we talked about it, you know, um, you know, in the chapter, you know, offline and you know on this recent webinar we were at um it really you know give you gave gave you a chance to really develop a rapport and relationship and really hone in on that working style what i learned about myself was that i, I i'm really grateful that i didn't really change um over the span of time <clears throat> sometimes you know when you go through schooling and training when you go into a career people change, people, you know, eventually evolve <clears throat> and, you know, they become, you know, different people. And for me, I've, I'm really grateful that I didn't really change as a person. I still was able to become myself, become more of myself, but still just wear a different, um, kind of like a suit, almost like a different uh, costume or a different facade or a different personality, um, so to speak but still remain the core of who I am. And so what really, um, the, the best part of that was, you know, people really found that to be very genuine, very authentic, and they really resonated with that. And I think <clears throat> that was my biggest asset was really staying true to who I was because that connected people almost immediately. And that helped me in terms of improving patient care and improving that relationship with me and that opposite person. Well, I think when you, you know, and this is true outside of medicine as well, but when you show up at work and you're excited and you thank God that you have that job and there's nowhere else you wanna be, 
you know, that, that kind of radiates right, right out of you. And, and people respond to that because I know that was my experience when I, I had a period where I was outside of medicine. And when I went back in, I was just so excited to be doing clinical medicine again. And people really responded to that. It wasn't something I did intentionally, but then I realized, you know, that when people have that, that attitude, you know, it's kind of, uh, in, I hate to use the word, but it's infectious and it's contagious. <laughs> and, uh, it, it, it makes, the good stuff, the good stuff. <laughs> the, the good kind, the, the good kind. And for me also, uh, well, I, for those watching on YouTube, there's a palm tree kind of set there behind me. And that's just symbolic because I'm technically on vacation this week. And so we have a different setting, but I'm not actually there. But when I was doing a uh, locum sort of six months a year i was there quite frequently and so it was the flexibility of locums that allowed me to pursue other interests now you have other interests did, did locums fit with that yeah so um around 2017 um you know i launched a brand called the chef doc and um, basically it's an online resource i'm um, helping um, you know, others out there far and wide uh, to be able to understand more about their body, their health, their overall wellness. And, you know, really shortly, you know, I come from, you know, a traditional Chinese uh, medical doctor who's my mother, and she inspired me to go into medicine. And um, her world is all about, you know, preventing things and maintaining the body, both emotionally, mentally, and physically. And so I went into school thinking I was going to blend East and West. And found out that uh, there's a lot of things um, that is burdened by chronic lifestyle related diseases or components or risk factors. And so I was kind of ill equipped in my mind, um, you know, through medical school and training. And so I went on a totally different trajectory, got into culinary school, got my certification in health coaching, got board certified in lifestyle medicine. And I used these combination of these things to be able to enhance my own practice and also to build up this brand. And then since then, you know, I've written a book, I, you know, host my own podcast and um, I just launched a, you know, masterclass series. Um, really the whole message is really teaching others on learning how to thrive. And um, I think what COVID did was it really taught us the fragility of life, you know, not just, you know, whether it's, you know, short or long, but just how fragile we are. And, you know, Andrew, Dr. Wilner, you and I, we both share the love of the ocean is what I, you know, learned. We're both scuba divers. And sometimes when you're on a beach, for example, and you're looking out, um, you realize how small we are, right? And then when you combine that with time, you realize how short you know, life is. And so, you know, I do my best to, uh, you know, inspire and impact as much as I can. So I do these iterations, you know, you talk about the art of medicine. I believe this is where the art of medicine is, is where you can craft, you know, how you want to practice and what you want to put out there, you know what I'm saying? So. What is Thrive Medicine? Thrive Medicine is basically, um, you know, you're, 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 you're learning the tools and education to be able to elevate your life from, you know, a, a, a certain point and elevating it up. And what that means is that, you know, I find, you know, from a personal standpoint, I find that we kind of do this routine, what society kind of you know, put on us where, you know, you're born, you go to school, you know, you find a career, you, uh, you know, get married, you have children, and then you just seemingly just perish. And I call that the default life. And, you know, there's nothing wrong with that. But I felt like, you know, there's something more than that, you know, so personally, you know, I've been able to not follow that default life. And, um, you know, I'm an Asian, I'm a first generation immigrant, you know, child. Um, and a lot of different things is, you know, I, I do, I'm very atypical, non-traditional as a, you know, a, as a son, as a, you know, a person of color, as a physician. And so Thrive Medicine for me is my way of showing people that you don't have to do things in a very default manner, in a very routine manner, or in a way where society or outside influences wants you to be, you know, you can carve out your own, you know, plan. Um, and sometimes, you know, you just kind of have to leave yourself to the wind of life and, you know, let it guide you as well. So, you know, I give 
people kind of like an action book, a set of tools to be able to, you know, guide themselves so they can find potential on what makes them happy and what, you know, helps them to kind of impact others as well. Because it's not about just thriving yourself. It's about thriving together as a community. So, you know, there are a lot of physicians who are kind of disillusioned with their, with their practices. You know, I, I talk a lot uh, with people about non-clinical careers and there's websites to help physicians find non not to get away from patients because they don't like it. And I, I always resist that a little bit because I think if you're creative, there are ways to sort of enhance your own practice and, and do what you're doing is sort of to, because you want to help patients. Most of the doctors that I know that are leaving clinical practice is not because they didn't like treating the patients, because those doctors never went into clinical practice in the first place. You know, they went to pharma or they did something else, but these are people that like clinical practice, but it was the sort of the rules and regulations and corporate sort of yeah. approach that you mentioned earlier that kind of drove the, in fact on this podcast i think in a couple of weeks i interviewed a physician who really just could not tolerate the the slot that she was in and has has left medicine and started an online school because she mm. has always thought of her as as a te herself as a teacher and so mm -hmm. she's not yep. doing online school for children which is what she loves and she's very happy but I, you know on the on the other hand i think it's so tragic you know that the the box that she was put in just was not to tolerable for her you know to practice uh, medicine because she did an awful lot of training which yeah she enjoyed so I, I think it's hard for doctors who are in a, in this slot so can you give me some examples? How are you able to break out of the slot, you know, the box? Yeah, yeah. And it's funny you, you mentioned that because it is a very long and arduous road that we, you know, um, you know, we choose to put ourselves in, right? Because at the end of the day, we, at the end of the day, we really want to impact people. We really want to help people. It's not just a saying, it's not just a cliche. And, you know, what medicine has become is, it's the it's the expression that I like to use that there's too many cooks in the kitchen where, you know, there's too many people in between you and the patient where, you know, I, I told someone recently that out of 100 percent, probably 5 percent of 100 percent is really direct patient care and everything else is you know, going to meetings, doing these webinars, you know, um, updating, you know, your yeah, profile, resume, CV, um, you know, and documentation and, you know, and there's a whole billion other things that we're inundated with to the point where you just don't really enjoy it anymore. And so I understand why people go through non-clinical, you know, careers and routes. Um, no, not one size fits all. So for me, what I did was um, I explored things that I never knew that I, you know, would, you know, be doing. I started to write, I started, you know, hosting and speaking and all that stuff. And they were things that I didn't really anticipate on doing. They just kind of fell into place. So serendipitously, it just kind of fell into place. It resonated with me. I had enough energy and motivation to continue it through. And so, you know, a lot of the things I still do to this day. And so, um, you know, a couple of examples is, uh, you know, doing the podcast, writing the book, and then doing this masterclass series, similar to your friend. Um, you know, that teaches others because doctor in Latin is, you know, at the end of the day, the root of it is to teach, right? So I think education is super, super powerful. And if I can impact, you know, a larger group of people, that's more satisfying to me than one-on-one -on -one counseling, you know what I'm saying? Um, so, yeah. All right. Now you're, you're still kind of relatively early in your career, but I, I'm going to ask you a tough question. If you were talking to, uh, say, a uh, medical student about their yeah. career, what advice would you give them so that they can find the career that, you know, resonates with their with their soul? Yeah, yeah, it's a very good question. Um, I actually, uh, you know, my one of, one of the blessings of being a locums over the years was you know, I got to peer mentor a lot of medical students. Um, and so to answer that question, I would tell them to really, really, really do the due diligence of shadowing as many, many physicians as possible. 
and then um, pick clerkships and rotations that call out to you. And don't do it because your grandfather did it or, you know, you follow a lineage of, you know, physicians and you feel like that's what you need to do, kind of like the box that you're talking about. And not necessarily so, you know, it's your life, you know, you have full direction of and choice of going wherever you need to go. So it does, you know, it, it depends on how much time you take to be able to vet, you know, what is good and what is not good. And unfortunately, you know, com, uh, you know, when you contrast that to PAs and, you know, uh, nurses and stuff like that, they can switch laterally, right? Um, but physicians, once you go on a pathway, it's hard to kind of just switch. You would have to go into residency again, get board certified, do all these hours and years, and it's hard to switch. So getting into that specific, you know, uh, specialty is very important. So you know, shadowing, men, uh, following, you know, having a lot of mentors is super, super important. And for me, I went into family practice because it was very broad and very diverse. I really enjoyed, you know, not knowing what was going to come through that door. Um, and so that provided me a lot of laterality, you know, in terms of, you know, you know, that type of medicine. I think that's, uh, that's great advice. Now, before we wrap up, Colin, if uh, viewers and uh, listeners are interested in learning more about uh, culinary medicine and stride medicine, how would people get in touch with you? Yeah, definitely. Um, so I have, uh, so my handle is the chef doc and uh, it's the same handle for uh, uh, most of the social media platforms. And my main website is chefdoczoo.com. And uh, if you want to check out my the latest uh, masterclass series that I put out. It's also called the Thrive Formula.co, and Thrive is spelled with T H R with the number five. And you know, I'll uh, give it to Dr. Wilner, and he can put it into the show notes as well. So, oh, absolutely, that that'll all be in the show notes. Well, this has been great. I always enjoy talking to you, Colin, and I want to thank you for being on the Art of Medicine. Thank you so much. This program is hosted, edited, and produced by Andrew Wilner, MD, FACP, FAAN. Guests receive no financial compensation for their appearance on the art of medicine. Andrew Wilner, MD, is Associate Professor of Neurology at the University of Tennessee Health Science Center, Memphis, Tennessee. Views, thoughts, and opinions expressed on this program belong solely to Dr. Wilner and his guests, and not necessarily to their employers, organizations, or other group or individual. While this program intends to be informative, it is meant for entertainment purposes only. The Art of Medicine does not offer professional financial, legal, or medical advice. Dr. Wilner and his guests assume no responsibility or liability for any damages, financial or otherwise, that arise in connection with consuming this program's content. Thanks for watching. For more episodes of The Art of Medicine, please subscribe. www.andrewwilner.com